So we're looking at DNA, and um, what we're going to look at is something called anti-parallelism. So here's a nucleotide, and um, I want you to look at the, the sugar part, the ribose, and so that's this. And notice the carbon atoms are labeled um, on the five carbon sugar of the nucleotide. So you can see these numbers. Here's how you label them. This is number one. So remember, organic chemists don't write carbon all the time because there's so much carbon. So every time you have a bend, it's carbon. And there's a hydrogen sticking off here and another hydrogen here, but they don't draw that. So this is a five carbon sugar. There's one, two, three, four, five carbons. So you label this carbon one. That's the second one, carbon two. Here's the third one. Here's carbon four, and here's carbon five. I guess I put this in two. Anyway, carbon one, two, three, here's carbon four, and there is carbon five. So take a look at the way um, DNA is, is set up. You've got your carbon one, two, three, four, and five. So here's the three carbon, and here's the five carbon. So we're going to call this the three prime and this the five prime. And so this one's set up the same way. So here's a three here and a five here. Now what can you tell me about the two sides of the DNA? Look at how the O is pointing up here. And now look at this. The O is pointing down. So this side is actually completely upside down compared to that side. So here's carbon 1, here's carbon 2, here's carbon 3, here's carbon 4, and here's carbon 5. So here's the 3 1, and here's 3, and here's 5. So this is set up so you have the 3 prime end at the top and the 5 prime end at the bottom. And this is the opposite. You have the 5 at the end and the 3 at the bottom. So these things run um, parallel to each other, but upside down. So we call that anti-parallel. So this side is going 5 prime to 3 prime. And this side is going in the opposite direction. And without even counting up the carbons, you can kind of see that the pointy part here, is, the oxygen part, is pointing up. And the oxygen here is pointing down. So they're opposites. So DNA displays what we call anti-parallelism. So if you remember, perpendicular is like this, parallel is like this, and anti-parallelism for this means that one strand goes in one direction and the other strand is going in the opposite direction. So the two chains of nucleotides run opposite to each other in a head-to-tail relationship. So if you look at this side, here's the 5 prime end, that means here's the 3 prime end, and this one's backwards. If this is 5, that's got to be 3. So if this one's going 5 to 3, you'd look at 5 to 3 going up. So 3 to 5 versus 5 to 3. They're backwards. The DNA, so the bases along one strand of DNA can be arranged in any order. So it's different between you and me. That's why we look a little bit different. So A, T, C, uh, whatever's here, G, T, A, etc. So this is maybe the order of my DNA. Your order might be the same, but maybe instead of a T, you've got a C there or something. So this differing sequence of bases is what makes the genetic instructions of one organism different from another, which is why we all look a little different from each other and why we look very different from an oak tree. But for every species, A always binds with T and G always binds with C. And the order of bases on one side determines the order of bases on the other side. So what that means is that if you've got A, T, A, C, C, G, if you have that order, the other side has to have the complementary bases. So A should go with T, T should go with A, and any of you should be able to write all this stuff out for me when I ask you. So what would be the complementary strand of this DNA? A, A, C, G, G, T, A, G. First of all, you can cross out any U's because that's RNA. And so it's this one, A goes with T, A goes with T, C goes with G, etc. So that's what complementary means.